Okay, now we're going to continue our discussion of the new zones feature. And to review, we've got uh, three buttons in the upper right hand corner of the project window to show the left, right, and lower zone. And this really is a, a pretty uh, significant upgrade just in terms of overall usability because it gives you sort of this yoke of your most common tools uh, around the side of the project window at all times. So you're not dealing with nearly as many floating windows as you used to. Now, one consequence of that is that the uh, workspace concept has been greatly minimized because you just don't need uh, workspaces nearly as, as much because this the zones uh, accomplishes the same task for you. However, it is worth noting that the workspaces do integrate with the new zones. So if you have your, your zones set and focused in a specific way and you want one-touch recall for that, you can certainly go ahead and save that as workspace. Um, a lot of the prepackaged ones, however, don't don't really work so well anymore. They'll, I'm sure they'll probably update that in a uh, a coming version. But you can see the uh, sort of the prepackaged workspaces are kind of uh, not optimized for the new zones. But if you have one uh, zone set up that you like, you can certainly uh, save it as a workspace. Okay, so that is wow. That's a mixer and a half. Uh, one thing that I want to point out, in the new features, they stress the uh, zones as a function of the project window. But if you look in the upper right-hand corner, we have zone controls here as well. So we can open the two side panels and actually turn the uh, the strip on and off uh, with one click there as well. So let me pull this down to a little more manageable presentation. Oh, let's take the uh, this uh, the Retrolog track here. And this is just the factory demo song, so track 28 here. Um, if we click the channel settings editor once, we get the, the floating editor up that we just saw. If we click and hold that button, it's going to turn yellow, and it's going to say K. I have no earthly idea why they picked K, but they did. And it's going to open the, uh, the VST editor associated with that channel. And that's a real handy way to, um, to get in uh, to that function from the same button, just with a click and hold versus the, uh, the quick click, which is going to give you the, the channel settings editor. Uh, presentation. The next topic in the, the whole export and mix down thing that I want to go over is the concept of metadata. And I, I think after the, uh, the last couple of years, we're probably all fairly familiar with the concept of metadata, but in essence, it's information about the file that goes with your, your exported material. So it's not the biggest difference here is, is the trade-off between file size and quality, and uh, probably the two most, uh, the two highest quality uh, most common formats are the WAV uh, file and the AIFF file. WAV is sort of born from the Windows environment, and AIFF is an Apple uh, um, advent. But they're both lossless, meaning you get uh, you know high fidelity sound throughout. And uh, we'll we'll go into the others in in detail in a moment. But what I want to point out here is that that uh, once you've selected say WAV file, which is a very common format, you have the option to insert a broadcast wave chunk here. And once you enable that, the edit button comes up and you can come in here and you can uh, give a description, an originator. Usually this would be title and author and so forth, time and date stamp, and then a, a reference code. When you do that uh, and then select export, the uh, that wave chunk, meaning data chunk, is going to get stapled to the front of the, the file. It's critical that you do that if the file is going to be consumed publicly so that you get the appropriate credits and every time that it plays, the, the clicker registers that and so forth. However, not, not all audio editing applications um, are compatible with that extensible file. So if you, if you select these options and then subsequently send your file someplace to like a friend's studio or another facility where they're going to work with it and they're having trouble, it won't read it, it's not opening right, there's a very good chance it's because whatever application that they're using uh, finds that uh, broadcast wave chunk disagreeable. So in that situation, you'd want to turn this uh, back off and just send the, the straight wave file without any, without any extra stuff, at least until they're done doing their stuff. And then you would repackage the metadata before it's on to the final consumer.